Hello, so welcome to my presentation about automation visual UI testing. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to introduce myself. So my name is Maros Kuchi, and my mission is automation testing, and I work in NES Digital Engineering, uh, the big, big company all over the world, but uh, I'm located in Košice, Slovakia. We have an office like 600 people there. And uh, uh, here you can see my LinkedIn profile and also a uh, link to my uh, automation Java Selenium Cucumber framework, which I will be using also as a demo in my presentation. At the beginning, uh, I would like to start with two quotes, uh, which I think are related not just in life in general, but also to testing or automation testing. The first one is from Winston Churchill, and he said that success is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. And I think we can apply it also to automation testing, because in testing automation testing, we are talking about the failures. And there are some opinions that uh, we should have always uh, green Jenkins builds, but I think that uh, we should have also the red builds, because if we have the failures, we know that we have the big coverage, and that we are uh, catching the differences in the application, either bugs or improvements, or the problems in the test framework, or, or the environment can be down. So failures are good, I think. Uh, the second one is from Thomas Alva Edison, and he said that I have not failed, I have just found 10,000 ways which will not work. And again, I, we can, we can, I think we can apply it in testing, because as we are living in dynamic environment and in agile worlds, and we have like two, two week sprints or something like this, and I think it's important to try always some new tool, uh, try something new, and even if we found that, for example, one tool is not suitable for our team, we have not failed, we have just found that, okay, let's try something new, and at the end we will find the right tool. Uh, let's look at the agenda of my presentation. Uh, at the beginning I will uh, talk about some definition of visual UI testing, uh, then I will compare it with uh, functional testing, uh, I will review the tools which are on the market, and then I will focus on comparison of two tools in different benchmarks, like how to integrate the tool into framework, how to uh, run the tests, what is the feedback of this tool into your framework, how you can check uh, the results, how you can uh, ignore something from the validation in uh, UI uh, tests, uh, visual tests, uh, and how to run the test on the Jenkins, and if there is any free plan uh, which you can try for free of these tools. So let's look at the definition of uh, visual UI testing. I have two definitions. One is from uh, browser stack and one is from Apply tools. So according to browser stack, uh, visual testing uh, verifies if the software user interface appears correctly and basically it checks if the elements are uh, in right shape, position, or the size. The second definition from uh, Apply tools is that uh, it evaluates visible output of the ap application and compares the actual results with like uh, expected uh, design, and it catches visual bugs which could be different from uh, functional bugs, like from standard, for example, Selenium tests. So now uh, imagine uh, that you have a task in your team, uh, and you have an application which have, uh, has a lot of uh, elements, UI elements, and you need to like, write some automation test for it. And basically you have uh, two options. The first option is the standard uh, approach, like uh, to identify all of these hundreds of elements and write some assertions. Or there can be a second approach that uh, you will uh, just uh, write uh, one test and you will validate all the patch. For example, uh, you create a screenshot baseline, and you, uh, even uh, when you run next uh, test, it will compare and show you the differences. So uh, in my presentation, I will focus on this second approach. Uh, let's in briefly uh, review the tools which there are on the market, the, the main tools. Like the big players are Apply tools and their ICE product, 
Then we have uh, Percy from browser stack and also a screener, but the screener doesn't provide free plan, so I haven't played with this. And uh, I would uh, like to uh, tell about Visual UI testing in the story, and this will be the story of John. Uh, as you can see, the, the John is a very experienced uh, automation uh, engineer. He is skilled in functional testing, so maybe you know somebody like, like the John. Uh, he had good knowledge in coding, and he has a very good life, easy life. He has one application, not so complicated application. He's doing some functional UI testing, API testing. So good life for him. But as in life, everything could change from, day, from one day to another day. And one day, uh, his boss came to him and uh, said to him that, you know, this COVID situation, there are some problems in the company, so we need to move your project uh, somewhere else. We need to send out some people and uh, like different project where more people were doing is now yours and you need to start testing it. And it's not so easy application. It's, you see some more uh, pages, uh, more components and very much of uh, many elements. So uh, he starts to uh, find uh, some articles to study and he found, yes, uh, maybe I need to change my approach. Maybe I need to start something new. And he found something about visual UI testing. So he printed, as you can see, he printed some articles and is, is reading some documentation. But he is a little bit struggled with this. He's in his office. You can see the standard like office. Uh, he, he doesn't need windows because he just likes the code. So you can see code snippets on his walls. He, he doesn't like, like visual stuff. And he's thinking what, what to do now. Uh, but he uh, finally, uh, he was thinking and he found the solution and he's happy now. So uh, he found out that uh, maybe he will not uh, spend a lot of time with studying and everything, but he can reuse some knowledge of his colleagues. You know, he's working in the big corporate and uh, there are different projects and maybe he can find some colleagues which already have the knowledge and will help him, him very quickly. So he started his journey through this building and uh, he found uh, Alice. Uh, Alice is QA lead from project A and you can see his, her office is like big windows so she, she likes the visual stuff. She's looking from the windows and uh, what is happening there and uh, she's a big fan of Apple tools. You see the stickers and the logos all over uh, her office and she said, uh, okay, I will help you, but today I don't have a time, so let's set up a meeting for tomorrow. Um, please give me a link to your repository. I will clone it and I will do some uh, changes there and show you uh, how to use uh, the Apple to size. Okay, so uh, John is uh, satisfied, but not completely because uh, he's thinking that maybe one option is not enough. Maybe I need at least two options and I would like to compare what is better. So he continues with his journey through the building and he ends up in another office of Pamela. You can see Pamela is a QA lead in another project and also, also she has a window but not so big but she likes also uh, visual testing and uh, she's a fan of Percy. Also uh, stickers and logos all over her office and uh, she also likes coffee as you can see so uh, he is satisfied, maybe this could be a good match for him. So uh, he uh, set up a meeting for next day and uh, he prepared for this meeting and prepared some questions uh, which he can ask the girls and the first question uh, was uh, integration. So please uh, uh, Pamela and Alice uh, tell me how can I integrate these two tools into, into, your, into my framework which I have. And uh, Alice for Aprito said that uh, you just, uh, basically it's, it's a project where it's Java, Selenium, Cucumber framework, it's a Maven project, so you just add new dependency in the pom.xml file and you can start using Apple tools. Uh, Pamela for Percy is saying that, uh, okay, so you also need this dependency, but it's not enough. Uh, you need also something from JavaScript world, you need uh, Node.js, and use it with your framework. 
So now uh, let's look uh, at the demo prepared by the girls. So you can see uh, the framework which John is using. It's a Java Selenium Cucumber framework. And uh, there are like dependencies on various tools. And the first, what you need to do, uh, you need to add a dependency for Apply Tools Eyes in order you can use uh, it in your framework. Now let's uh, look at the test. So John prepared some uh, example of test of the Facebook, so standard uh, easy login to Facebook, and uh, then uh, Alice just added the steps for Apply Tools validation. So it's a feature file. If you know the Cucumber, the steps, uh, which are written in Gherkin, like text files, easy, easy uh, English sentences. And in the background, there is some Java code. So let's look. Uh, this is the step definition or the glue code, where you uh, connect these uh, words or sentences with the actual code. And uh, she's using uh, the ICE library. It's from the Maven dependency, which uh, was downloaded by Maven. And it provides uh, some methods which can be reused. OK, so <clears throat> this was uh, one part. Uh, and the second part, which uh, Alice for Aplitus was showing, is that uh, she added also the code in the before method, some stuff for uh, starting the connection between the framework and the Aplitus uh, servers, and then also the after method, uh, where are some validations. So after, after finish of the tests, we should have some results in the framework and see it. Uh, so this is what uh, Alice was showing. Uh, so just uh, some Maven dependency and some uh, Java code. Uh, next, uh, Pamela for Percy started uh, her uh, demo. So for Percy, again, you need another dependency from uh, Maven, which will uh, basically download some classes prepared by the creators of Percy, which you can use. And we can see another feature file. The beginning is the same, Facebook login. And then we have step, but not with Applitos validation, but with Percy validation. And again, we can see the glue code. And uh, uh, we are using uh, Percy library, again, downloaded from Maven. So this part was uh, very uh, similar to Apply Tools, but it's not enough. You also, uh, here are some steps which you need to do, like one time setup. You need to uh, download uh, Node.js and download some Node.js uh, library. So this was the first uh, question, which was answered. Uh, by the girls. So John is prepared uh, further and is asking uh, another question. Uh, how can I uh, run the tests in my framework? And uh, Alice for Aplitool is saying, you just uh, run it as standard. You run the feature file. You will run the test, and it will execute this uh, Aplitool validation. And uh, Pamela for Percy is saying that uh, uh, you need to run it as a Maven build and wrap it with uh, some special uh, command, like uh, npx command. So let's look at the demo, what they prepared. So again, uh, we will start with the Alice for Apply Tools. And uh, you can see, so, so she is showing that uh, as you are running uh, the tests in IDEA IntelliJ via Cucumber for a Java plugin, you will just press this same button, and it will execute the standard Selenium steps and then also the validation for Apply Tools. Then Pamela for Percy is showing that uh, you can run the test like this, uh, but uh, there will be no communication with Percy. You need to uh, run uh, it with these uh, special steps like uh, Maven command and this uh, npx exe command, it is wrapping the standard Maven command. And this will basically uh, run the tests, and also the communication with Percy ser server will be established. OK, so that's for this uh, uh, criterion. Uh, let's look on another question of John. So he was asking about the feedback. So do I, how do I know that uh, when I run my framework, 
what was the output of this uh, validation? If if uh, the build was successful or not? If there was uh, like any failure or, or no failure? And um, Alice for Apply Tools is saying that. Uh, you can see the results uh, inside the framework. So you, have, you will have some response from uh, Applitools IOS library, and you will see either red or, or green build. And uh, Pamela for Percy is saying that uh, you will see uh, just uh, the results of like functional steps before the validation. But if you want to see if the validation has passed, you need to go to like Percy UI and see there. So let's look at the demo. OK, so first, uh, Alice is showing up little. So uh, she is running the tests uh, now. You can see she's running a like, standard uh, Cucumber test. And the browser is open, basically the Facebook page. Then uh, the login to Facebook. And uh, now it is changing the resolution according to the setup of the tests. Now the Apply Tools uh, validation is uh, happening in the background. And uh, the, the browser is closed. And you can see that the uh, after method is still running. So now the framework is waiting like for the response uh, from the Apply Tools server and waiting for the information if it was uh, successful or not. It should finish uh, in the moment. And uh, we will see the output. So you can see that uh, we have the red uh, step or failed step. But if you look at the stack trace, we can see the link. And if we click, click on this link, uh, we are transferred to uh, Apply Tools UI. We will look at it later. But now you can see that inside the framework, you have the response. You can click on the link, and you will see the details of the failed test. So uh, this was for uh, Applitool's eyes. So then uh, we, we switched to uh, Pamela for Percy. And uh, this is a similar feature file with uh, standard uh, login to Facebook and then the Percy test. But if we want to have communication with Percy, we need to execute in a command line, or if we are using IDI IntelliJ, in a terminal first, like the connection with token to Percy, and then this Maven command wrapped in npx Percy exec. So we can see Pamela is running the tests uh, like uh, this way, and we can see the Maven build is running. Uh, it is uh, she's using the JUnit framework, so we are running JUnit uh, runner. And we should see also uh, the test started very soon. So again, the Selenium uh, is starting the browser. The step here uh, is the same. So Facebook page is opened. We are logging to Facebook. And uh, we can see that in a moment, the test will finish. The Maven build has finished. So if you look in the terminal, we can see the link again. So also, uh, Percy is providing the link. But if we connect to this link, we can see that test uh, finished in the framework. But the validation on Percy side is still uh, ongoing. And then uh, you can see, as we saw, uh, the UI for Apply Tools results. It's something similar also here. So this was about uh, the running of the tests. And uh, now the question is, uh, another question from John is, uh, where can I uh, see the results? Basically, not just the feedback, if at all, if like the, in general test pass or failed, or, but I want to see the details of each uh, like validation. So both girls are saying that uh, you can uh, see it in the UI of our application. So uh, first, uh, let's look at uh, Apply Tools. This is basically the... Uh, most work with Apply Tools and Percy is in, in this UI. So you, you have the link in the results. And uh, in Apply Tools UI, you can see that uh, on the left, we have like the list of the builds. And if you click on any build, you can see a list of all the screenshots. And uh, also, if you click on the screenshot in this uh, purple color, you can see the differences. You can switch between the baseline 
Like the first screenshot which you decided that this is correct, and uh, you can see uh, comparison side by side with actual screenshot and see the differences. Also, you can highlight the differences. Uh, also, the zoom there and uh, look at the difference. For example, there was different type of the font, the uppercase and lowercase. Also, uh, at, the, at the top, you have uh, buttons for approving or declining the screenshot. So very uh, easy UI to, to check the results and to decide if it is OK or, or not. And something similar is also for uh, Percy. Uh, then uh, Pamela started to showing that, uh, uh, yes, you have the link in the console. And if you look at, at Percy, it's very similar. So again, on the left, you have uh, the list of the builds. And uh, you choose the screenshot. And you can see in a red color what is the difference between a baseline and between uh, actual screenshot. And uh, you can, uh, again, display just a new screenshot or display the baseline. You can uh, display them by side by side. And uh, very uh, similar, nice UI. You have also the buttons for approving, not approving. Uh, you see also uh, the buttons for uh, different browsers under each it run and, and the resolution. So. This was uh, their answer. And another question that John was thinking, so what, what um, will happen if, for example, I have a dynamic uh, page where I have each day, for example, actual date, and it is changing each day, and test will fail each day. So can I somehow say to these tools that please ignore this part of the validation? So yes, uh, it's possible. Uh, Alice for Apply Tools say, is saying that you can just, in the UI, uh, select the part of the screenshot, and it will be uh, excluded from the validation next time. Uh, for Percy, Pamela is saying that uh, if you want to exclude something, you need to do it in the code, in the framework. So let's look uh, at the demo. Uh, so for Apply Tools, um, we'll open uh, the screenshot and uh, imagine that uh, there is a part of the screenshot which you want to ignore. So we will uh, zoom in. And uh, there is a button, like ignore button. You just click on it. And then you select the section of the screenshot, which should be ignored. And that's all. It will be ignored in next runs. And even if it is changing each day, it will be not uh, make the validation as, as a failure. <coughs> Now let's look uh, for Percy side. Uh, if you want to uh, do something like this in Percy, uh, <clears throat> you need to go to the method, which is basically doing the screenshots. And there is a the version of the method, which is taking a parameter, like a string a variable. And you inside this uh, variable, you put the identification of the element, like CSS, and also you need to say what to do or change in this attribute. So for example, uh, you will say that this element uh, should be hidden and not displayed. So uh, this is a little bit different for these two tools. Uh, another question, important question, was uh, what about continuous integration? Because I will not run it from IDEA IntelliJ. I want to run it from, uh, I have the builds in Jenkins. And uh, is it possible to do it? And uh, both girls are saying that, yes, uh, it's, it's very easy to do it in Jenkins. So let's look. Uh, this is a Jenkins, which uh, John is using. And the girls prepared uh, the jobs there to show uh, how it is possible. So first, uh, let's look uh, on the job for Apply Tools. So if you go to the configuration, uh, you just uh, need the most important part is this step. So it's uh, like build Maven. A step where you just uh, put uh, the command, and then in the results, nice cucumber results on Jenkins, you can see uh, that the, in the after method uh, it failed, and you have the link. Okay, uh, and then for uh, Percy, Pamela is showing again the very simple uh, Jenkins job, and uh, but now it's different step, so it's. Uh, Windows uh, command there uh, with uh, this npx-exe uh, uh, maven command wrapped inside. And 
you can see that inside the framework, you just see if it is green, if this uh, functional tests are passed or steps passed, and if there is no like problem with communication, but uh, you don't see if it's red or not. And the last question, uh, very important, uh, from John was, so okay, uh, I would like to play with this, but uh, is there any free plan which I can like do proof of concept? And uh, Alice for Apple Tools uh, is saying, uh, if you want to play with this, yes, there is a free plan. You have like 100 uh, screenshots per month for free, and you can play with it. And uh, for, for Percy, uh, you have 5,000 uh, screenshots per month in the free plan. So uh, the girls were just showing uh, the page, where is the information about it. Okay, so now the John is happy. He, he has uh, the information. He has, the, in his framework, he has some examples which he, he can uh, use. And he said that uh, I will take some time and we'll decide. And, but thank you girls for this. So this is the end of my presentation and I hope that it was uh, interesting for you. Maybe you are considering using visual testing, maybe not, maybe you will consider in future. Uh, and maybe this could help you to try these tools. Uh, also, if you would like to play with it, uh, there is uh, my GitHub repository, uh, which I showed now, and uh, you can clone it. You can just put your Facebook credentials there, and you will run it, and you will see. Uh, first, yes, you need to create the accounts in, in both uh, applications, but uh, very easy implementation. And uh, if you will have any questions today or tomorrow, I will be here. Or if then later, just reach me out via LinkedIn and we can have some calls and then discuss anything about UI testing or uh, automa automation testing in general. So thank you very much. And we can start with Q&A. Thank you. So if you remember correctly, Q&A means question assurance. So I expect some questions. There is one in the back. Hello. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a question. How automated UI tests work in case if there are multiple A-B tests running on the page, which I want to check? Uh, sorry, could you please repeat the uh, end of the question? Uh, I want to check a page, but there are multiple A-B tests running on this page. How ca can I use... Uh, UI automated tests. Uh, what is running? Multiple? Uh, A-B tests, which one test uh, is, I don't know, coloring button from green to uh, yellow, and another changes some icons. I, uh, in a session, I can be whether in a test group or like in control group, so uh, depending on that, I would see different versions of the page. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> first is running uh, the first step, uh, first test. So you will make like first baseline from this uh, because uh, you, uh, I haven't uh, shown it, but uh, each, uh, you can have like multiple scenarios and uh, each uh, scenario can have like a screenshot name. So uh, you will have different screenshot for different scenario. So in one scenario, you can have a different baseline as in uh, another scenario. And also, uh, the screenshot name could be different. So, actually, Mar uh, Marsh, over here. Uh, I think the question was about um, if you have a page that is using A/B testing, which is quite common in marketing. Uh, so you have two versions of the same page, and uh, it's flipped randomly. And when you take screenshots of that page, you end up with. Uh, basically false negatives because the A-B test is interrupting the, uh, the ah, so actual mm -hmm. regression, yeah. If it is randomly, then I don't think it's possible. You can have separate test cases with separate baseline, but if it is random, then it's random. Then okay, <laughs> yeah, you need it. to you disable the A-B test, basically. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. We have a question down here. Uh, thanks. Uh, basically, I have a question that um, what is the, the accuracy rate of the, uh, the uh, Apple tools gives? I mean, technically, does it compare like uh, pixel by pixel? Yes, I mean, uh, for Percy, it's pixel by pixel comparison. So, so anything like uh, change, you have to take the new uh, base image? Is that... Uh, 
Yes, for example, uh, I played uh, on my project now, we are using Percy, so I, I know more about Percy. Uh, basically, Percy is doing, uh, like basically it's taking the resources of, of your like test from your computer when it, when it is running, but it is uh, like rendering is on Percy side, so uh, it doesn't depend on, your, because uh, there could be problem that uh, if you are running on your computer, you create the baseline, and then on Jenkins, in, in, it is running on some node, Jenkins node server, and there is some different setting in the fonts, it could fail, but for Percy, this doesn't matter, because always it is rendered on their servers. Uh, for Apply Tools, uh, I played a little bit with this now, I used it in my previous project, and a couple of years ago, and uh, it was like, doing uh, rendering on the server when it was running. So it was uh, important to have same settings of everything there. But uh, Perseus, it's on their side, the rendering. Okay, I don't know if question. I answered the question correctly. <laughs> Hopefully, yes. Last question. Okay, uh, if I may. Do you have any uh, recommendations on which types of tests are good candidates for visual testing? Like, which categories of tests would you qualify to be good candidates to be tested this way? Thank you. Yes, for example, on my actual project uh, in NES, uh, we started to uh, run Percy tests on an uh, internal application, which is like a repository of all UI components. So, no big functionality, no calculation, just the you click on the menu, select the component, and you have like hundreds of different components. Where it's very hard to use like functional testing because you need to write thousands of uh, identifications, thousand assertions. So, in this situation, when, when the application is more about the layout, more about the like design, and not about functionality, uh, in this way, I think it's used to visual testing. But uh, you can um, edit. For example, you have some functional test in some, any framework, and you decide that in between step number 10 and 11, I want to do the visual check, so you, you can do it also this way. Okay. Maybe last question for you from me as well. So, um, sorry, I'm over here. So, uh, when you consider all the browsers that are out there, okay, um, you consider all the devices that are out there, you consider all the resolutions that are out there. So in order to run a proper, let's say, regression set, what is the reasonable amount of combinations that you should be aiming to cover for, a, let's say, a typical uh, web application, which is in common use, say, an uh, uh, internet bank application for uh, an average bank? How many resolutions and how many Ooh. variations? I think visual testing is good for it because uh, you just, uh, for example, for Apple tools, uh, they have like a grid, uh, it's called grid, and you just uh, define at the beginning what resolutions, what browsers, and the one scenario will run against everything. So you are not limited uh, just uh, with the number of screenshots and you need to pay, but... Uh, but in the end, I mean, you will uh, end up with hundreds of variations. Yes. So, so uh, mm. what is the... Where would you draw the line? And maybe to find out uh, that some statistics uh, about the clients, mm. uh, what percentage of clients are using, are using the most resolutions, and focus on this. And because it's always about the money which you have for this project, uh, and, and the people and resources. So maybe start with some uh, most used resolutions, and then if you have more time, resources, you can increase the coverage. It's a good idea. A good idea. All right. Thank you, Maros. A little applause. So here's a little token of appreciation. You can test it later. Thank and, you very much. Uh, thanks for coming over. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. Thank you.